Every year, thousands of students leave their home country to study at BYU-Idaho. Their attendance in your class is made possible from hours of studying for English tests, extensive paperwork with government and education systems, endless fees, a touch of pure luck, and the hope of obtaining a visa. What does it take to sit in your class? A great price. Are you recording? Yeah, yeah. Bro, literally? Did you move the camera? I swear. No, 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 no. So yeah, make sure you're always looking at the camera. Yeah, the camera? Okay. I'm from Brazil. I am from Nigeria. Hong Kong. I'm from Mexico, Veracruz. Okay, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. <laughs> Nigeria is an amazing country. It has a lot of uh, tropical sites, and it's something I really miss almost every day. The educational system in Nigeria wasn't something I was really into. The conditions weren't the best. There were a lot of immoral things and things that I just didn't want to expose myself to. When everybody asks me what's the biggest difference between the Hong Kong and the US, I would say peaceful. There's like a civil war and all that. So education is really not at its best in Ethiopia right now. So say a classroom that should only have about 30 students, you would see over 200 or 300 people in it. In most cases, you would have people sitting down on the floor, people standing by the window outside, and people just very far away that they couldn't even hear what the professor is saying. So while we're praying and searching inspiration and searching like answer, I feel that I should go to BYU Idaho. While I was on my mission, I had uh, some really good mission companions and most of them uh, heard about this scholarship program. So I followed through, did my research about it. I had a couple months to go home and then I started the application. It was just like a long list of things that I have to do. In order for you to come here, they need to know that you finished high school. So just looking at your diploma is not enough. So my transcript has to be translated to US type of education system. So like the Ethiopian transcript wouldn't work for me to apply here. You have to basically redesign your diploma, but instead of the words in Portuguese, I had to design them in English. So I had to send my transcript here and pay $165. And then once they confirm that those documents are correct, then they will send that information to BOU Idaho. So once you finish your application, like everybody else, you have to take this test called TOEFL. TOEFL, it's like an abbreviation from Test of English as a Foreign Language. Reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And it was a long exam. It took me like three hours, three and a half. So the test costs $270. If you don't get the amount of points that BYU Idaho requires you to, you have to pay that same amount and take the test again. Took four times TOEFL exam. <sighs> it's two hundred dollars. <laughs> of course, I'm so sad. <laughs> there were things I never heard before. You know, it was kind of like more like a professional setting. Reading and writing wasn't as hard as listening and speaking. I have an African accent. We just have ways of pronouncing things the way it sounds to us. See, Jesus, you can literally write it like this. Let me see. Or you can write it like this. Two of them, they correct. I mean, you can say Jesus. Jesus is. Well, you can, can put the, you yes. can put the We don't study with aggressiveness, people. <laughs> but luckily, uh, months later, after writing the exam, I got a, a letter from Tofel and I passed it, and I was like, oh wow. And it was just such a relief. This night. Oh, finally. I didn't want it to take it again. It was expensive. It's time to plan my ne next step. Once you get accepted for school, then it's time to get your visa. Went to the website of the application. We submitted my information, and since everything is in English, I needed to help him to translate what I was saying. So my friend Kevin was helping us in the process through Facebook Messenger and through phone calls, like, hey, what are you putting here? What should you put in here? Probably like three months later, I had this appointment in the embassy. And that is not a fun experience. If anybody tells you that, oh, they enjoyed their experience at the embassy, that's a lie. All those places are very far. They're each four to five to six hours in an airplane. From my hometown to Mexico City is four hours in a bus. I was uh, supposed to have my appointment at 6 a.m. I showed up at the embassy at 4.30 
or earlier than that and I noticed that there were over 200 people already at the embassy. It was so scary because like I've heard a lot of people not getting their visa regarding their document even if they had the best bank statement, the best TOEFL scores, even if they paid for tuition in the US, the embassy literally don't care. It's expensive and it takes a lot of time so you don't want to get denied. I remember seeing a young man just collapse at the embassy. They said that was like his third time at the embassy. There's this line right and someone in the uh, kiosk will call you to go to them and interview. So you just have to like walk in with your documents. And they will ask you some basic questions, something like, how long would you plan to stay in the US? Do you have any plan to stay in the US in the future? Why I wanted to go to that school? Uh, what major I was planning to, to go? And then they said, okay, you, your application is done. The guy behind the window just said, welcome to the United States and your visa has been approved. Oh my, I can't even explain. That was like one of the happiest days of my life. Yes, I did it. You have this huge relief finally. It was luck for me. I was lucky and Jesus also. You know, at this point you already spent so much money. I paid a lot of money to get that interview. My parents especially sacrificed so much. When I came out, I got into the car and I just kept quiet. Until he drove off, that was when I was just screamed in the car. It was so loud that people outside the car had to stare into the car like, what is going on in there? Knowing that I'm actually going to be the first from my family that I've gotten a visa to go to the United States. I'm actually going to be the first to go to the United States, first to study in college, you know, all of that. Once you have the visa and you have your I-20 and all the things that school sends you, you're ready to go. As soon as I landed here, it was obviously a shock. The roads were so big and the cars were so big. Everybody's big. Everything is just humongous. Why am I small? What is happening? Food portions are so big. You could probably feed a whole family in Brazil with the, you know, a meal for one here in America. You can turn right on the red light here and it's like, what? The first day it snowed, I was really excited about the snow. I mean, I've never seen one in, you know, physically. I've always seen them in movies. The first couple of weeks I like it. I didn't call my parents to face them. I'm like, hey, the snow looks like this. It's so nice. I thought that was how it goes and then the next morning everything should be back to normal. It was the coldest I've been in my life. So it was an adjustment in, in a lot of things. The, the first day, first class I came in, I was like looking, intentionally searching for another black person in the class. But I feel like if I missed class, the professor would probably notice because, yeah. Because most people already look at me with some kind of pity in their eyes. I could be walking to campus and somebody will just see me and start smiling. And to me, I'm like, uh, don't do that. I don't know, you don't smile at me. I have been stopped at Walmart several times. Uh, people asking me where the Mexican aisle is. At first it really bothered me, but now I just know where it's at and I just tell people and I don't really care. McDonald's drive through it's always bad for me. They make me repeat myself like three, four times. In Mexico, in the college that I did, if I miss a, an assignment or a homework, you talk to the teacher, like, okay, okay, so it's not like that bad. Uh, here's more strict, you know, I mean, you have Canvas, or you have all these programs that I never saw before. In college in Mexico, everything is a notebook. Here I was making professional documents in Word and PowerPoint. So my biggest challenge was to figure out the technology at first. Around holidays, it's very difficult because it's so, so family-centered and you want to go home, but Going home is too expensive, it's often not an option. You just learn how to deal with it over time. One well, of the main positive things that I, I have learned here is to, to trust in, in yourself, to trust in your skills. There's a lot of great things here and I'm so grateful for all of them. But I wouldn't have been where I am if it wasn't for the people around me. Met my best friend right here. I know he's really care about me and he changed me a lot. I mean, I've been able to learn a lot of things that I think has helped me become a better man. I feel like if I was back home and doing school there, I wouldn't be as confident and independent as I am right now. Uh, you, you need to make your own decisions. You need to to challenge yourself. You need to learn from your mistakes. Honestly, at first, it was a little bit discouraging because it just feels like there are a lot of things I'm going through that nobody else there is going through. I've never built anything with my dad. There has never been a time where we sit down and say, okay, now let's build a mini sports car for fun. 
that's not a thing we do at home and there's there was nobody in the class i could relate that to everybody has something amazing that they have done with their dad and all of that but so i see the things that i have not been able to do and i just I, I aspire to do them i did not build this with my dad doesn't mean i can't learn how to build it in class and eventually build it with my kids in the future but i could make that difference so that they just don't go through everything i have first Yeah, is there anything else you want to say? I think that was most of it, so. Uh, I don't know, I just <laughs> tired, I can't load anything, I just, okay. <laughs> what would you like them to understand about being an international student? Uh, we're dope. <laughs>